Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashner, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. Hello, this is your favorite host. This is Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream. And beautiful people, today I am speaking to feline expert Sylvie Sterling, who's an ambassador and a bridge between cats, humans, and their galactic star families. We are talking about cats, their purpose, and star families. I love that. And that's Sylvie's, not mine. Purpose. So welcome to the show today. It's going to be great. And of course, you can see her brand new. This is just a band saying, you know, this is not for resale because I got one of those first ever copies. But her new book is coming out when? On Lionsgate, right? How perfect. On 8-8, this will be out. We'll talk a little bit about her book later on when she comes on the show. So join and thank you so much. You know, Dare to Dream, so many beautiful awards, so grateful for them all. Three Talk Radio Positive Awards, COV Award for Best Radio Podcast Show, Welp Magazine names Dare to Dream, one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, and it is high ranking under self-improvement on Apple Podcasts. If you're with me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, memberships are available. So you definitely want to sign up because you'll get to spend time with people like me and Sylvie, but privately get to ask questions and interact with the guests. Thanks to Dr. Dane here and Excess Consciousness for their beautiful contribution in life and also for being the sponsors of this show. They do energy work. If you want to hook up with them and understand better what they're doing and start to do the energy work anywhere in the world, go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com. I am a media visibility specialist. I'm also a practicing shamanic energy healer. I do book writing coaching. So if you would like to have your book, get some love and help and get it to the finish line of publish reach out to me at debbie-inger.com on the contact form. Also, I've got a company that guarantees your book reaches international bestselling status. And finally, I am a publicist, so I have always a handful of clients, spiritual messengers, and I do some of that work for them. I really want to honor today's show. And as my gift to you, for all of you who love like me, this conversation about star seeds and understanding better our galactic lineage. I have a free gift for you. It is a free star seed report and a video breaks down 19 different star seeds so you can understand your gifts, your mission and purpose, your career, strengths, weaknesses, all of it. It's phenomenal. Even sometimes what you look like. So find your galactic origins in this mind-blowing free gift, and it is at galactic-shaman.com. That's galactic-shaman.com. I've got a new shamanic healing program opening up. We're concluding one right now. It was phenomenal. I really love who comes to these classes and who I get to meet. So if you're feeling it and curious and wanting to do some healing work, There is a new program that I'm opening up in September, and it is called the Animal Spirit Medicine Shamanic Healing Program. This is a profound journey. I've taken it myself. It is a sacred, mystical realm about animal beings, and these animals have chosen to share their wisdom here on earth. There's going to be a lot that you learn in the class about each animal and what its medicine is. And then we will be applying that medicine to your life. So for that class, go to myvisibility.site slash shamanic. And by the way, this will be in the notes. So if you didn't get it, no worries. Check it out in the show notes. It's myvisibility.site slash shamanic shamanic. Okie dokie. Well, my guest today is Sylvie Sterling. She is an international cat whisperer. 
speaker, intuitive, and spiritual teacher. She is the author of the new book, The Cat Secret, and another book, Your Cat is Your Guide, where she reveals the secret soul mission of cats. What might that be? Well, to put it succinctly, to help their humans align with their soul, S-O-U-L, purpose. Sylvie empowers cat lovers around the world to awaken to their true selves through their cats. As an emissary to the Lyran Star Nations, she helps awakening souls connect to their starseed mission and galactic origins. Sylvie's been featured on Coast to Coast Radio, Conscious Life Expo, New Living Expo, Disclosure Fest, Summits, Podcasts, and Newsweek Magazine. And in fact, coming up in October, I will be moderating the Lyran Conference, which some unbelievable presenters, you don't want to miss it. And Sylvie is part of that as one of the presenters. So thank you for being with us today. And her website is sylviesterling.com. Um, and with that, I welcome the very beautiful and wonderful Sylvie to Dare to Dream. It's great to have you here. Hello. Thanks for having me. It's really good to be here. Yeah. Well, I got to start with this, Sylvie. I know you have a cat named Aaron. Is mm-hmm. he there with you right now? Is he here with us? He is. And I'm going to turn my screen for a moment. Oh, hi, hi Aaron. My beautiful six months old kitten. And he's always with me. He works. He's at work right now. He's a healer. And he's always with me. Um, He's with me when I do classes or one-on-one sessions. And he sends healing to everybody who wants the healing. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for being with us. And thank you in advance for all you're going to contribute to today. I will certainly feel the energy. Mm -hmm. So, Sylvie, we're here to talk about cats, your specialty, the Lyrans, and our galactic feline origins. So in your estimation, where do the cats come from? Where do they come from? And we talked a little bit about their purpose, purpose in Mm -hmm. your bio, but I really want to know what is their secret mission? Where are they from? What's their secret mission? Mm -hmm. So to put it in a nutshell, to make it very short, the cats are seated here like we are from Lyra. So the feline blueprint comes from Lyra and they showed me how it's very much alive in us too. But the cats were basically, we were seated here from Lyra, the humans, and the cats were left here for us, with us as a reminder of who we truly are because we forget who we are, right? We go through this human experience, we forget who we are and they give us, they basically gave us um, the cats to remind us of who we are. So they are from Lyra. That being said, um, many of their souls come from different planets. There's also cats that are from the Pleiades. They're souls, basically, or Arcturians. Every star seed under the sun, the cats can also be that. So they're originally from Lyra. And the second question was about their secret mission or what they do here. Secret mission, yes. Yeah. So he's waking up now, so apologies. I always... When, when I see a cat, I have to touch it. So um, <laughs> the secret mission. So they have beautiful, wonderful individual purposes with us. Just like we humans, we all have a unique purpose. But together um, as a species, they are here to enrich us with love and joy frequencies. Mm. Enrich, enrich the human field and the earth field. The ascension process that's going on right now. They're enriching us with love and joy frequencies. <gasps> Very interesting. You know, I was interviewed um, the other day on a show and this woman was asking me some questions about the work I do. And uh, my channeling is really different. It's nothing like what you do or any of the other channelers out there, but I do my own version of what comes through me. And she was asking, how do you, what, what do you channel? She was trying to get the specifics. And I I went inside because no one's asked me that. And I said, ah, I channel love. That's Mm. really all I channel. And that's where I see the changes in my classes. That's where I see the changes when I sing. Yeah. And when I do anything, probably even this, the podcasting, it's, it really is about this inflow of love and also what I feel here. It's very natural. It's not thought about, 
but I identify strongly with Liren. It's certainly my dominant star seed in this lifetime. So when you say that in relation to cats, they're here to remind us of who we are and to teach us about love and joy. That's very interesting to me because of the answer I gave this woman the other day. Yeah, that's beautiful. So they don't only teach us love and joy, they do that too, but they attune us to the frequency because they are always in the frequencies of joy and of love. Cats naturally are. And they attune us, they always say they act as a tuning fork for us. And oh, I hope he's not going to end the connection. So they act as a tuning fork for us. They attune us to the frequencies of joy and love and they feed it into the field. So that's their mission in the ascension process. They enrich our field with love and joy. Oh my God, we're getting it right now. Look at this. <laughs> oh, if you guys are watching on Spotify or YouTube, woo, it's beautiful. Aaron, thank you so much. I feel your love. Okay, so is that how these cats or kitties support us on our soul journey? Or are there other ways that they support us? Mm -hmm. So together, their joint mission is the joy and love frequencies. But individually, they have beautiful individual purposes, just like we have. Each one of us comes into each lifetime with a purpose. And the cats have purposes as well. So they are healers, or they are energy workers, they are lovers, they're joy bringers. Some of them are mirrors as in they mirror their person so that we recognize our, you know, issues and unresolved life topics. Some are teachers. Um, they have these beautiful purposes that they do for us. And their purpose usually has to do with our purpose. So whatever cat comes into your life will help you somehow with your purpose. And you mentioned that the cats originally from Lyra and that often the cat's origination can be from the Pleiades and Sirius, et cetera. And is that because of the Orion Wars and because the Lyran planet was decimated, so they were basically refugees? Well, let's say, yeah, the feline races or the feline nations, they spread all over the galaxy, exactly, um, after or as a consequence of the war. They were forced to leave and they set up civilizations in the Pleiades, in Sirius. Sirius is very much feline, mm -hmm. not only, but um, Sirius is a melting pot. But a lot of feline nations went to Sirius. Mm -hmm. A lot went to the Pleiades and to other regions. So the feline star nations are everywhere. And um, the, the feline souls can come from pretty much every you know every every star system out there and i make the distinction between the soul coming from a different place so you, you know when people talk about their star seed origin for me for all the work that i've done i do channeling i do work with people one-on-one -on -one. so in my experience a star seed origin is where your soul first incarnated so if your soul first incarnated in the Pleiades, then you are, let's say you have a lot of the Pleiadian um, in you. Or if somebody originated first in, in Arcturus, then he will identify with the Arcturians. He, he will be an Arcturian star seed. And if somebody like me, I my first incarnation was in the Lyra system. So I am I identify myself 100% Lyran, but that's my mission, right? I'm here for the felines, so that's my mission. And that's basically where you are from is not where your soul comes from. Because the way I understand it, the way they've shown me, our souls all come from the same place. We all come from source. Mm -hmm. We're all a, a splinter of source. But it's where we incarnated first. That is where we feel we come from. That is our, let's say, star seed origin. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the cats. They come, some of them incarnated in the Pleiades, some incarnated in the Lyra. Um, and that is um, what they come to us. And usually the cats, the starseed cats come to the starseed people. Mm. You usually get a cat from your star system to oh, attune geez. you and activate you to your starseedness. So it's really beautiful. I meet all these people who have Lyran cats. 
And it's because they're Lyran, but they haven't woken up yet fully to the lyran -ness. So they get the cats that will attune them to that frequency and activate them. Oh, that's so interesting. I love that. I have dogs right now. Mm -hmm. I, I miss having a cat. And I had cats my entire life growing up and into adulthood. I haven't had a cat in quite some time. And uh, when I did last have a cat, she was a Maine Coon. So if mm -hmm. you know anything about a Maine Coon, I mean, mm -hmm. they have all this beautiful hair. I mean, they look a little wild too with the ears and the hair on the ears, but that makes a lot of sense. She was beautiful, just beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm getting Syrian from her. She was a lion being from Sirius. She was fierce too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like beautiful creature, but you didn't want to mess with her. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a friend also, Sylvie, who recently said, I think her cat is sick, her friend's cat is sick, and she may know other people. And she was saying, it seems to me like a lot of cats are getting sick. And I was saying, seems to me sometimes like cats will pass away in a clump, if you will, that many cats will get sick and will pass on around the same time. Is that true? And is there a reason for that? Yes, yes, but on both counts. So they tell me that, yes, it seems like a wave, right? A wave of dogs or a wave of cats departing. And they tell me there is a reason because they are bigger and more powerful on the other side. So they their souls are huge. When I speak to a cat and I go on the soul level, I see this huge being. And for them to be in the small body, it's confining for them. The small. They love to be in their bodies, but they are so much bigger than the body. And they show me when they cross over, they are more powerful on the other side. They hold the energies for us. They become our guides. They can do so much more work on the other side. Although we, with our human consciousness, we want them to be here, right? We want to physically, we want to touch them. We want to be able to have them next to us. But they always show me they are more powerful on the other side. So when there's a wave of cats, let's say, crossing over, they strengthen the energies for us, for humanity, for their humans from the other side. So they're actually doing us a service, although to us it's heartbreaking, but they're actually doing us a service because they said they can serve us better from there. And Because they're not confined to a small body anymore. Have you had, I'm assuming you've had cats who have died in your lifetime. And if that is so, what have you done to process that? What have you done to get to the other side of that level of grief and missing, you know, mm -hmm. your best friend? Mm -hmm. So it's always hard. It's always hard to let them go. But I actually had three long term, long time cat companions uh, of 17 years and 14 years, respectively, and they all crossed over within a half year from each other. Mm -hmm. So that was really very tough on me personally. But I must say, after I've moved through it, I learned so much about cats and crossing over that they're never really gone, that they are just in another dimension. My When my first cat companion of you know of now in the last 20 years when she crossed over lisa she's the one who's on here she's the beautiful cat here on my book okay. so when when she crossed over um it was really hard but it was a blessing because she showed me the entire process she was lying next to me she showed me how now they're cutting the silver cord. Now they're now now they're opening up a portal. Now they're waiting there for her. They're bringing her over to the other side. She showed me the entire process as it was happening. And while my human was heartbroken, I just I learned so much from this experience. And she's been with me ever since. And then my other two cats crossed over after that. And each one of them was different, but I learned so much from it. So I can pass it on to other people now and tell them, yes, you're grieving. But when you get to that higher, once you're moving through the grief and you get to that higher viewpoint, you will understand that it did so much for you. It always does something. When, when, when we lose a cat or a dog, it just pushes us. It spirals us to the next level. It's a really hard push for some people, but it does something with us. So once I moved through the grief, I saw it as a blessing. Mm. Yeah, it is hard. I remember when this particular cat 
died. Um, her name was Chia. And I named her like, there, there used to be these things, these like Chia dolls or something, and you would mm -hmm. put water in them and all this hair would grow. So it was in honor of all her hair. And uh, yeah, it was so sad, you know, because a lot of cats die of kidney disease. And <clears throat> I remember going to the vet and of course he put her under so she would pass away gently and she was in my arms. I was a mess, weeping, sobbing in his office. And they were so kind. They just closed the door and let me take my time. Nobody was checking on me. Nobody was saying, we've got the next patient, nothing. And I was, yeah, so forlorn for so long over that loss um, they are a huge part of our lives, those beautiful cats. They are. But, you know, most of them still, they stay around us. They help us from the other side. And it's really easy. Anybody who knows how to meditate, and, you know, there's a lot of viewers here that know how to meditate. If you know how to meditate and call in your spirit guides or whoever it is you call in your meditation, call in your cats and your dogs on the other side. They are around you. They will come in. They will talk to you. It's really beautiful. I teach how to do it. But anybody who knows how to meditate can do it. And they have so much to say from the other side. It's a really beautiful experience. Mm. Nice. I like, I like getting tips like that. So I often will see a, a male lion. Mm -hmm. I don't know in my uh, visualization, I feel clear that I was a female Lyran, but maybe I was several different, you know, genders of Lyran. I just know that there is, excuse me, a very royal looking yellow golden lion that I see often. He is sitting on a throne. He has a, not a crown, but he has a cape and he has a scepter, like a beautiful scepter. He leans forward, like one hand is on the throne and one hand is on the knee. And he's intense, but he's freaking awesome. And I don't know if he's a relative. I don't know if he's an aspect of me. I don't know if he's a guide, but I feel this beautiful, deep connection with him. And yeah, so I just wanted to ask you about that first for any of the people who are listening and watching who maybe have these visions of a particular Lyran being that visits them or looks after them. Yeah, so many people tell me when they are in the starseed awakening process, so many people tell me they see lions in their dreams or they see big felines in their dreams and they don't know what it means. It means that their star family is coming through. They are trying to contact them and tell them we're here. This is you. You are Lyran. You are feline of feline descent. And I feel specifically for you, that guy that you're describing, I feel he was your companion. Mm -hmm. I feel he was your companion and where you originated from. I don't feel it was you, but he's your guide, but he was your companion and he's connecting with you because you're at that level now that I mean you've been on that level for a while um to to connect with him more deeply to bring out your Lyran your Lyran side more mm, that's awesome I feel deeply protected by him I will say and I feel that there's an intimacy between us so that really makes sense when you say that what a beautiful companion because he's got a little bit of warrior warrior W-A-R-R-I-O-R, -R -R, not worry, but warrior in him. Mm -hmm. But he's also a great leader, like really, um, yeah, he really serves his people. Yeah. So yeah, and he's very welcome in my life. Um, I mentioned that he is a golden mm -hmm. lion, but I understand also there are white lions. Are there more? Yeah. colors, if you will, of lions, what are the differences um, about them or their galactic races? Mm -hmm. So they always say to me, cats come in all shapes, forms, and sizes. Tell your audience, cats come in all shapes, forms, and sizes. There's nothing that uh, that that is not out there. The two main lion, lion, I call them lion beings, so that's how they introduce themselves to me as lion beings. There is two main ones, the golden ones and the white ones. I am of the golden, uh, so we are the same. We are the same origin. Um, I am of the golden 
feline lion being um race i don't like the word sweetheart um and then a lot of people are of the white lion being race and they're just two different let's just say two different families two different tribes right there is no right or wrong and everybody coexisted peacefully at the time so these are the two main lion being um, tribes that i know of but that being said i have seen everything in between and I mean from humanoid looking lion beings as in, and I see them, a lot of people depict them, they have a, with a human body and then this lion head. I tend to see them a little bit differently. I see them humanoid with lion features in their face, but not with a lion head on. Kind of like in Star Trek, you know, when they have all these different races, they all have a human body and then they just have these features in their face, right? So that's how I see them, lion features in the face. Everything down to um, cat-like beings with more of human features in their face and everything in between from really tall, like eight foot tall, down to a human house, you know, house cat size. And there's everything in between. There are blue ones, like the beings in Avatar, the movie Avatar one of the you know highest grossing movies of all time. And so many people were so touched by that movie. And uh, these being really exist and these, they are feline. I don't know if you noticed, if you remember the movie, I don't know if you noticed, but these beings, they look feline. They have feline faces, they, have, they move like felines and they actually exist. And they came to me at a meditation one time. They came through in a meditation and they said, we see you. And I thought nothing of it because I see a lot of beings in my meditation, right? And they came through and they were blue and they said, we see you. I said, okay. And then a couple of days later, I switch uh, through the TV and I see the movie Avatar pop up and um. I see these blue beings. And I, I I kid you not. And one of them said, I see you. She said, I see you. Remember that? She always yes. says, I see you. And the movie comes and I said, oh, okay, Avatar. And I want to keep flipping. And then she said, I see you. And I said, oh, my God, it's a message. They wanted to tell me they exist. This movie was channeled. These beings exist. So that type of feline race exists, too. And anything in between. Yeah, I think, and, I think and, many and, of us have wondered if Avatar and one and two were channeled material. Because yeah. come on now. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, absolutely. I, I believe that it was given to the director of the movie. I, I believe the idea was given to him. I'm not sure he knows that he channeled actual beings. And he probably made up the whole story, right? But part of the story rings so true. And I'm sure they wanted to get themselves known to get people used, like disclosure, mm -hmm. right? Get people used to the idea that there's blue feline beings out there. And they're all just like you and me, right? So this movie was definitely channeled. <clears throat> excuse me yeah and um and they came to me and many of my clients we actually went to that planet together in our travels i take them astral traveling they want to know where they're from and then we kind of travel to their planet and then they come out of the meditation they say that movie always got me tearing up and now i know why because that's who they are in their true form or something very similar looking so there's everything in between and when it comes to the cats specifically I have seen them um, in many different shapes, forms, and sizes. So, Erin, I'm sorry. This is, I know it's live. Oh, sorry. Erin wanted to leave. So, um, cats, right? So, when it comes to the cats, they show me different forms and sizes. Some cats are also in their true form, are humanoid looking like the lines that you describe tall humanoid looking and then there's others that look like little feline hobbits if i may say so kind of like half size human human body but um kind of a furry face like human hobbits and then there's some um my cat jamie for instance he showed me his true form he comes from sirius he crossed over and he looks like a house cat, a sandy looking house cat. And then he has a lion head. So everything, everything's out there and they're beautiful and they're wonderful. And um, cats come in all shapes, forms and sizes. Wow. Okay. First of all, the Avatar movie. Mm -hmm. So true. I never thought about that, that they look like cats, but it's very true because they do have ears. I remember their ears moved and these uh, the the big eyes and the cheekbones and they always had those tails 
mm -hmm. could connect with nature directly to communicate or their animals, right? The animals that they, the creatures, I don't know what they were, that they rode. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they have cat-like tails. Very they interesting. In, in one or two instances, she hisses like a cat. Very good. Oh, cool. Really cool. Uh, and then all of this description, Sylvie, that you just shared, I wish so much that there was some kind of artist out there who could depict all the different forms you just named. I think, you know, I used to go a lot online to try to find pictures of Lyrans. And I mean, some of them are okay, but nothing like what you just talked about. I don't know if you're an artist, but it would be incredible to visually see all of this. I think I'm going to have to work with an artist to kind of put, because it's all in my head. I'm not an artist. Um, um, it's all in my head. But yes, I would love to put it out there because people tend to depict them as human body, lion head. And I don't see it quite like that. So uh, one of these days, we'll put it down on paper. It's very powerful. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of Vashta. She's a very famous star seed artist. <laughs> very difficult to get in to work with her, but she does draw people's aspects, the aspect that reveals itself to her. And so she channels this and she drew me. I didn't tell her anything. She'd never met me. She lives in a, a Nordic country and she drew me as a blue lion. Oh, I never even thought about that. She drew me as a blue lion being so stunning. I mean, the power that comes out of the painting that she created for me. And then when she described this, that this cat was all about frequency like the power that came out of the cat was so strong that there were even waves in the background and she's wearing this blue hooded gown of some sort. And even the material has waves in it from frequency. And she has, it looks like claw marks here, but you can tell it's something else and it's apparently sacred technology. And then, a, you know, beautiful third eye, um, sacred stone going on and then boof, piercing eyes and all of this. But I think the um, artistry is uh, creates a lot of resonance for people to see all these aspects you're talking about with the cats and the lions and the sizes and the colors. It's beautiful. I have heard you talk about, and we I think most of us talk about this, we are not genetically human, right? Let's just all agree upon that. We are, and there really is no such thing. There's a lot that happened through history and I won't go through that history, but from what I understand, there were five specific races that seeded humankind, especially once we got into trouble after the Anunnaki did their thing and we weren't that terribly healthy anymore. So I've heard you say that humans have more lion DNA than any other galactic species. And then I've read somewhere else that um, Lyrans make up only 0.3% of the world's population. And they're a small population explained by the fact that Lyrans were said to be amongst the oldest beings in existence. So can you weigh in on this about first about our DNA and and how the Lyra and the lion DNA is in us and how that manifests too. Mm -hmm. So this is channeled information. They always show me that the Lyrans were the ones first who first put their DNA in the human genome. Mm -hmm. And then the others kind of joined in later. So they claim they were the first. I mean, take it or leave it, right? But the fact is that... Um, it's interesting you say that about the 0.5 uh, of Lyran. That's not, you know, it is what it is. Um, the thing is that the Lyrans always tell me they don't show themselves as much as the Pleiadians or the Syrians. They seem to be much more hands-on, right? Because you meet all these people, they channel the Pleiadians, they channel the Octurians, they That's channel the, the Syrians, they channel all these other entities, uh, all these other star nations out there. But very few people actually talk about the Lyrans. And that is not that we don't have the numbers, to my knowledge. It is because the Lyrans are more hands-off in their approach. Mm. They are not so hands-on in the matters of humanity. They are here to guide us 
for those of us who tune into them and they become they come in more and more frequently now but they do not give us you know advice or they are just here to guide us so they are more hands off they are more watchers than they are really hands on in this ascension process so for us for the lyrans it is about awakening lyran star seeds and many of them are not awakened yet so maybe that explains the numbers and it's all about awakening them from within and not from all that, you know, from the outside. And it's about awakening the activation, the frequency. Every star seed or every star nation has a certain frequency. And when you awaken to your lyranness, let's say, and that's what I do. That's what I'm, it's my other task that I'm here to do. Not just talk about cats, but I awaken lyran star seeds mm. and they, they send through activations through me. So we activate our frequency and then the Lyran grid gets strengthened around the world. It's kind of like lighting a Christmas tree and then when you light one and then the whole, you know, it just goes further and further, like one of those chain of lights where you light one and then it just, they all come on. And after so and so many people get activated, the grid gets stronger around the world. And that's for every star seed or every star nation they're activating their star seeds so that we need all these patterns and all these grids and all these frequencies, as you described it, right? You said the frequency that emanated from them. That's what the Lyrans do. They're activating their star seeds to form that grid, that frequency, that Lyran frequency around the world. Mm. So I don't think it's not that we don't have the numbers. I think we haven't awakened many of them yet. Like the Pleiadians, they've been faster, I guess, in awakening their star seeds. Yeah. So let's awaken them right now. If somebody's listening and they're saying, well, I wonder if I'm a Lyran star seed. I don't look like Sylvie. I don't look like Debbie. I look like something else. Do they have very distinct personalities and personality traits? I would say so. Well, first of all, there's the hair, right? The big hair. You have the big hair. I have the big hair. I'm just straightening it. But um, there's the big hair. There's the big, let, let's say, a prominent nose, big hair. We kind of look like lions a little bit, right? But um, usually people tell me they they have a connection with cats that they cannot explain. They have an inex Even though they might not have a cat, but they have an ex inexplicable connection with cats. They see cats, lions in their dreams, like you described. Um, many say that I keep seeing these lions in my dreams lately, and I don't know why. So they're sending you messages. They are most likely, they don't feel, they don't always feel happy with their body. Because we lions, we have a very strong, very large, very, let's say, energy, a different, different energy in our body. So a lot of us don't feel comfortable in our bodies because wow. it's kind of this meek, small, humble, you know, human body. And it's so dense. And we are used to having these great and grand and fluid and energetic bodies. So a lot of lions don't feel happy in their body. And usually they, but that goes for all star seeds. Um, you feel you're called to something bigger. You're called for something. You, there's something you need to do. There's an urgency now. You need to do something, but you don't know what it is. So many, many lyrans, they feel there's something they need to do. And they take to animal communication or healing arts, or they want to work with the animals because they're awakening to their, not to their animalistic side, but to their feline side. So if you have any two of these five symptoms that I just talked about, then it's likely that you're a lion star seed. If if you if this resonates with you, if the talk you you're you know the talk you and me getting together today, if that resonates very deeply with you, you're a lion star seed. If you just by the description of those star races nations um, that I just mentioned, if that resonates with you, you're a lion star seed or a feline star seed, let's say, if the movie Avatar resonated with you, for some reason, you don't know what the connection is you have with that movie, but it brings you to tears. It touches something in you. You're a feline star seed. Yeah. And are there things that are star seed markings? Um, yeah. Are there markings for star seeds that would indicate one or the other that you would know of? Well, for the for the lion beings, the, the lyrans are not equal to the lion beings. So the original lyrans, lion beings are two of the prominent 
races, let's say, mm -hmm. but there's other feline races from, from Lyra. But for the lion beings, let's say for you and me, um, we have the big hair. That's a marker, having a really big hair that it's really hard to tame. I mean, my heart, I just, you know, <laughs> but I have a mane and I'm guessing you probably have a mane too in the morning, right? When you get up. Yes. The nose, a very, let's say a very, not a big nose, but a really wide nose, like a lion. Um, we have a strong physique usually. Hmm. So that goes for the lyrids. We very much look like lyrids, uh, like lions. Or other feline star seed, let's say from Sirius, they might have the finer features, like a more like a cat, like a house cat. Very fine features. The cat eyes, a lot of people have cat eyes. Mm. Your your feline star seed of some sort, if you have these cat like eyes. Um, so those are the feline star seeds. For others, I find the Pleiadians, they are very much of a of a of a a fine build. They sometimes they have pale hair, they're tall, they're pale. Uh, or pale as in they kind of have translucent skin almost sometimes. So the Pleiadians look different from the felines. But these are just some markers that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. And besides the lion people, I mean, it's just amazing that there are also bird people, the avians, there are fish beings, swan, horse, bear, dog. Have you met any of those in your work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. So I've worked with the horse beings a lot. They come through because horses and felines actually have a connection, very strong connection, mm -hmm. interestingly. So those come through a lot. The swan beings come through a lot. These are the artists among the people. We're talking about humans now. These are usually the artists, the people who are into the fine arts, the people who love to decorate, to, lo to love all the good, or pottery, painting, um, decoration. These are usually swan people. They are there for the, they, they, tend to to love the good things in life, the beautiful things in life. The Arcturians are often healers, or they say also technologically savvy, but I find the Arcturians that I see a lot in cats and humans, cats are Arcturians as well, mm -hmm. they are usually healers. And I see this big major, you know, third eye that they have. And so I work a lot with Arcturians. I work a lot with Pleiadians, come through a lot. They have this loving energy. And then the Syrians, of course. And the Syrians, yes, the the, the water beings, the feline beings, um, some are more angelic looking, some are more, I don't know. There's always a, a theme with water, right? With the, the Syrians. So yeah, absolutely. They come through a lot too. And the cats are all of that too. And the dogs too, by the way, they are all of that too sometimes. So interesting. You said something so powerful to me, Sylvie, and I literally, I mean, for you, it may have been in passing because you were trying to make a point about something, but for me, it was like an arresting thing that you shared. And specifically, you were saying, look, when people do these starseed ascension panels, meaning someone like myself moderates and you get a group of people, there's somewhere between four to six people, usually they're experts like yourself, you made mention that on a panel like this, everybody's talking about humans or they're talking about the galactic races um, in a being form, but never in an animal form. And that, and it's very true what you said, people do not broach the subject of just like you did right now, horses, swans, fish, dogs, cats, et cetera, because there's lots aquatic animals and so forth, that they are star seeds, star seeds. This is so huge. So can you talk like, I want to give you now, like take the mic for all those times you were not invited to those star seed or star seed ascension panels. I want to give you the floor to say, what don't we know? What do we need to know that would be so important for people listening to understand how these animals are star seeds and what they're doing for us. What is the recognition there? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. So they are often, I often call it the missing link. 
because a lot of people are they are on this awakening path or they might not be on this awakening path yet but they are star seeds they're sleepers basically there's so many star seeds that are sleepers they have no idea i had so many clients that were sleepers that had no idea about this galactic stuff and then they asked me about working with their cat and i would connect with their cat and the cat would show me her star family's all around her. She's this lion being, she's this Pleiadian, she's, her star family's all around her, but she doesn't see them. She doesn't know about this stuff. Um, and they are not only here to activate us and to 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 activate us to the frequency. They, they bring in that frequency of the star family to attune us to our star family or to our star seedness. They are here literally to wake us up. And any let's say weird behavior or people say behavioral problem with cats they say the cats have these behavioral problems they meow they do this they do that right and then they go see an expert and the expert says you got to play with your cat more i'm not putting down any cat experts by the way but the thing is a lot of the weird behavior of cats really is due to their human is asleep they need to wake their human up they need to wake them up. Hey, you you know, there's do something. And and the way they wake them up is that they start to they start to Google. They start to say, my cat's acting up. My cat's acting weird. Um, and then they start to take to, let's say, well, I got to find an animal communicator or I need to learn animal communication to talk to my cat to see, you know, find out what's going on. Mm-hmm. And by doing that, the cat mm-hmm. basically trains them or pushes them on their path because maybe they're meant to be an animal communicator. Maybe they're meant to be a healer. A lot of cats, dogs, they come to people who need to wake up to to their their path as a healer. And mm-hmm. so many people are taking to energy healing now. But a lot of people are not seeking the healing because everything's fine. And then let's say they get a cat or a dog, and most of them, they're star seeds. They get a cat or a dog, and then they get sick, or they have all these, you know, whatever symptoms they have, be it emotional or, or physical ailments. And then the people start to dabble in energy healing. And that's how their cat or their dog opens them up to becoming a healer through their cat. They're finding their passion. They're finding their calling through their cat. They're learning to tune in. They're learning to talk to them. And then that's when their star family comes in and says, hey, guess what? You're feline star seed as well. We're the lion beings. We're all around you. So they're literally waking us up to what we're supposed to do. And these were just two examples. Or um, they are waking us up to, we need to, to, to be this artist. We need to record this, whatever, you know, we need to start painting. They are pushing us to do what we love to do. They are just here to remind us that we're here to do something. And the universe usually sends us a cat or dog from our own star nation so that they attune us to those frequencies. And they do that through purring. They do that through lying next to us. They do that through pushing us right to do something right and then we start to google and we start to learn new things because a cat or dog pushed us or a horse for that matter so i call them the missing link because there's so many star seeds here that are still sleeping Mm -hmm. and the animals push us to wake up any way they can wow incredible you know i am exactly that story you just said because We had two dogs who died within six months. And when the first one became, I think when the first one had first passed away, it was pretty rough. You know, there's a lot of grief and not just us, but also our remaining two dogs. And so we hired someone who did animal telepathy. Now I'd never heard of that. It wasn't a communicator, it was a telepathic gift she had. And it was unbelievable that she could speak with Oliver who was no longer in dog form but she could also speak to our other dogs and help them with their process. I think actually they needed less help than we did. But the incredible thing was that she immediately, my dog that I brought into this relationship, Shelby, immediately took over the conversation. And she's a Leo, my my dog. So it's so her, right? She's the happiest, friendliest dog ever. And she she immediately took over and told this woman, hey, I've called us all together. And I'm here because I want to tell you, I am from the angels. I came from the angels and they sent me here to my mommy. And my mommy and I look an awful lot alike. And people really like us when we walk down the block. And she went on and on and on about her origins and about her personality. And it was like, 
And she really is not angelic, like, oh, sweet. She's angelic, like the most amazing presence and smart too. And th none of this was a surprise, but it was amazing to hear her voice be expressed. I mean, I think we are forever changed from having heard the dialogue with all of our dogs and their needs and wants. And because of that, we subsequently had another session when our next dog died. And now Rob is enrolled in animal communication, even though we, we've been on the path for a long time. But really, Sylvie, exactly what you just said, there was another level in us as well to be woken up and to participate in like, oh, there's something very deep going on with these animals. Yeah. And wouldn't it be amazing to open all that up? Yeah, yeah. I hear that. Oh, I had that so often. I started out just being a just a cat psychologist, right? I just wanted to do really innocent stuff, tell people how to play with their cats and where to put, you know, put the scratch posts and stuff. But this whole world opened up to me because um they started to speak to me, as you said. And then they started, and then, then I, I developed this gift. I said, oh my God, I can do animal communication. I learned it, but it just came to me so easily. And I, I did this so often with clients, what you're saying, so often that that kind of stuff came through and the people, they hired me to fix their cat's problem, right? And then all these messages came through, as you said. And it's just the most amazing thing when we give them a voice, when we listen to them. And I got woken up by a cat too. I knew nothing of it. I was an executive in the movie industry. And then I said, second career, I got to do something more meaningful. I'm going to work with cats. I'm going to be a cat psychologist, right? But then I got woken up. I didn't know I was a star seed. I was asleep. I always looked up to the stars. I always felt different. I felt very different. I connected to animals, specifically to cats, more than to people growing up, but I just didn't know who I was. And then I got a channel message through a cat. I was, you know, cat sat next to me and all of a sudden I said, the cat, I think the cat's trying to say something. And I listened in, I kind of went to this meditative state and then my lion star family came through and they said, you're a lion being in a human body. We are around you and we're going to help you from here. It came through a cat. I would have never gotten that message otherwise. I got into the healing arts through the cats because my cat was, I got a cat that was really sick. So I started to dabble with healing and that's how I became an energy healer. So they awoken, they've, you know, they, they've woken me from a deep beauty sleep at the time. Mm, that's so beautiful. What um, I, well, I really want to talk about your book for a moment here. It's so exciting that mm -hmm. it's going to be released on August 8th. Lionsgate, perfect, perfect, of course, time. So folks can get this book, The Cat's Secret, I know on Amazon, because I've seen it there, um, like ready to roll out. And where else? All other booksellers, basically all online booksellers um, will have it. It's uh, it's for pre-order on Amazon right now. All other uh, booksellers will have it. And hopefully also on the shelves soon. Um, you can ask your, your bookstore next door for, for stacking the shelves with it. Um, that distribution is going to follow later. But you can buy it in your local bookstore if you ask for it. Or you just get it online, Amazon or any other bookseller. Beautiful. Are the Cat Collective going to be helping you with your book launch, Sylvie? Yes, 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 they are. They are always speaking through me. They're speaking through me right now as we're as we're here. Um, yeah, absolutely. We're, I'm going to do a, a call, a gifted call on that day, and they're going to speak through me and talk about their book because they wrote it. The cats wrote the book. I did not write the book. I channeled it. I did not. I mean, I wrote it, but I didn't read it. I write it, um, if if you may, because everything came channeled through me. So the cats really, the cats in my higher guidance, the Lyrans, they wrote the book. I just, I was the vessel who, who recorded it basically. Yeah. I had tons of notes, but on a separate sheet of paper, because I wanted to keep, it's a beautiful book. I wanted to keep it intact. And I, I, by the way, I, I love that you had these little markings of the little paw <laughs> throughout the book. So very well done. And, you know, in every chapter, you can even see, she also uses the cat paw mark. It's very iconic. So, okay. The cat secret by Sylvie Sterling. What do the cats think about our future? <laughs> do they hold hope for humanity in the path we're on? 
Yes, absolutely, absolutely. They have so much trust and faith that everything's going to be okay. And that's what they want to teach us. So when we go down that road as in, I'm so stressed out, I don't know what the future holds, the future, you know, everything just looks, you know, people go down that road where they watch the news and they get all worked up over it. And what the cats are trying to tell us is, um, have faith, it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay just um, create the best future for yourself and that's how you create the best future for humanity so basically if you create a love full of love a life full of love joy and purpose and that's what the book is about really to how to create a life full of love joy and purpose together with your cat because your cat has a purpose and we're talking about that at length but also your own purpose this book will help you find your own purpose so when they, they say create a life full of love, joy, and purpose for yourself, and that's how you lift up humanity. That's how we're creating it for the whole. So they have a lot of, they have no doubt that the future is going to be golden and great. They just, the cats wish for us to be happier for us humans. The number one wish of the cats for the humans is, please, dear human, allow yourself to be happy. Because they see us, right? They see us stressed out. They see us labor away at our project. They see us think about sometime in the future, I will be happy when, right? When I achieve this, when I move to that place, when I have done that, I'll be happy. And the cats say, no, you need to be happy now, dear human. Be happy now. Look at us cats. We're happy in the moment. So the number one wish of the cats for the humans is be happy. Allow yourself to be happy. And what about, Sylvie, if cats live together? If you've got two, three or more cats, do mm -hmm. they sync up? Do they somehow connect? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They connect. All the cats in one household are always connected. Till they have this telepathic connection. So even they explain to me, even when they are in three different places, let's say one is outside in the yard and one is with you and the other one is in far room and you're getting into distress or you're getting into a mood where, you know, you're just getting some, you know, and then all three cats will know. And then you will see magically all the cats coming to your room all of a sudden because one cat is with you and says, hello, human in distress. And then all of them come in there. So they're always connected. All the cats in the household are connected. And I have three beautiful cats myself. I, I, you know, three very beautiful cats with very different purposes. And they, everybody takes care of me one way or another. Everybody has their, their, their thing to do for me. I have one joy bringer. I have one mirror who mirrors my own where I'm not aligned yet or whatever unresolved stuff is flaring up for me. She will mirror it. And then I have my beautiful Erin, who's my healer. Mm. So. Aaron, who's no longer in the room with us. He has, no, he was, he had to leave. He had to leave. Oh, Aaron, he was activated. There was so much lion energy. He probably said, you guys are good. There's enough lion. He's a little lion too, by the way, or a big lion, big um, golden lion as well. So he probably said, you guys are good without me. You don't need any more lion power. That's so great. I love that they know these things. I, I want to go back to the idea of frequency because in your book, you said something that I thought was very curious and specifically humans are physical, cats are vibratory. Can you explain that? Mm -hmm. So they, we, we humans, we create, I mean, we also create on a vibratory level. You know, obviously we know that by now, it took us a long time to know that, but now we know that we are creating through our energy. But they say humans are here to also create on a physical level, as in we build cars, we build phones, we build, you know, we write books, we, we do all kinds of, we, we create life on a physical level as well. And they say the cats are obviously, they don't create on a physical level like we do. They don't build iPhones or cars, but they create life on a vibratory level. And just by being themselves by by putting their energy out there by being there for us on a vibratory level is how they create their life and how they help co-create our life because how many times i mean you have dogs but um, dogs cats doesn't matter how many times a human is in distress or a human is you know whatever situation or whatever mood or emotional slump people get into and then the cat or the dog will show up and they will lift the mood. They come in and the cats will purr and the, the dog will wag, wag their tail or whatever they do or roll around the belly. And we touch him and it releases oxytocin. 
and we sit with them and they attune us to the higher frequencies of love and joy just by being next to us. They are shifting our energy. And when they shift our energy, then, you know, the whole house shifts. If you shift your energy, then everybody around you will be shifted. So that is how they create on a vibratory level. That is really true. My dog, Shelby, she makes me laugh often. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't realize it till I start laughing and focusing on her. And then I realize in that moment, oh, like some heavy energy just left. And there's all this, I'm completely present with her right now. And then there's all this levity and mirth. It's so joyful. She's, you know, like a little imp and so adorable and just does these things that are Shelby-like and boom, brings me right back. Yeah, yeah. How they also do that. They bring us into the here and now. They understand that we are humans. They they understand the cats or the dogs, doesn't matter. Now they understand they live so closely with us, right? They get us, they understand us better than we think. They understand our human world is complex. They understand we have all these things to do. We have schedules and jobs and rules and regulations, right? They get that. They understand that. It's not their thing, but they get it, right? <laughs> But they also know that we need to come into the moment. Mm. They are connected to the ascension energies. They know that they are here to bring us in the moment, to teach us love, to, to attune us to love and joy, but also to come in the moment. Because we humans are always here, right? I mean, even we humans on the spiritual path, we still tend to be here, right? Because we're still doing stuff. So we think about our schedules and the next thing to do. And so we still spend a lot of time up here. And we kind of forget to live in the moment sometimes. And the cats or the dogs, they bring us in the moment when they, sometimes they force us to sit down. The cats will literally sit in our lap and stop, stop us in our tracks. They bring us in the moment. They know we need to stop. They know we just need to breathe for a moment. And they will literally come and stop us, sit on us or, or force us to go for a walk. You know, when it comes to the dogs mm. or something, yeah. they will come and get you out of whatever mood you're in. They understand you need to come in the moment. So beautiful. I want to also let people know about some of the things you do and offer. I know you are the founder of the Feline Soul Academy, and that's an international school for animal communication. Will you talk about that and your other offerings? Yes. So the Academy is really a place for um, learning animal communication, for learning energy healing, specifically for cats or for animals, um, but it also works for humans, of course. But it's also for spiritual awakening for understanding how your cat is connected with you and how through your cat you can go into the spiritual awakening, spiritual growth. Also for starseed awakening. That is why I called it Feline Soul Academy, not Cat Academy, because I also cover the whole Lyran. That's also my job, right? My mission. So I'm also covering the Lyran awakening, activations, attunements. So you can also come for feline starseed awakening i have classes for that i have life classes sometimes i have um, home study classes and specifically now with the book when it comes out there will be a master class around the book there is a webinar coming up on 8 8 it's a very powerful date this year it's an 888 portal because 2024 is also in numerology in eight right? So it's a triple eight portal. It's a very powerful number in numerology. So it's a triple eight portal. It's a Lionsgate portal and it's International Cat Day for the more mundane um, look at it. So the book comes out on that day. I will do a, a call, a free call on that. You can enroll uh, for that now for that uh, free webinar on my website and we'll take it from there. And there's going to be classes around the cat uh, cat secret because it's about so much more than just the cats. It's about the true you. It's about you finding a galactic origins, uh, connecting to your purpose, to your soul mission. It's about so much more. So there's going to be a beautiful masterclass um, all to come. So I'm really looking forward to that. Nice. So lots of ways to participate. And then you also, Sylvie, offer private sessions. Is that correct? Are they readings or what are they exactly? Mm -hmm. I don't offer that many anymore, but check my website. Every once in a while, I open my calendar for some private sessions. Typically, people used to come to me for that, or typically, 
people still ask me to connect to their cats, to do a reading, a healing session, communication session for their cats. But most of it mostly turns out to be a session for them as well. So I always I talk to the cat and through the cat, I start healing for the human and whatever unresolved issues there are with the human, we'll tap into it. We give you healing. We give you a cat healing. We give you a better understanding about the connection between the two. We're, we can go into your galactic origins. I can astral travel with you to see where you're from. Um, do some activations, attunements, your starseed frequency. So it's for both the cats and the humans usually. Mm, wow. Fortunate. Uh, you know, and interesting, I didn't realize, you, but you're so right. This is an eight year. My dog, Shelby, is 888. She's born on mm. August 8th, 2015, another eight year. Wow. So yeah, I was always pleased about that. N understanding numerology when I got her like, oh, massive abundance with this girl. <laughs> Very powerful. Yeah. yeah. So Sylvie, this is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? My dream. Wow. Putting me on the spot. Well, I, I wish for many, many people to discover the cat secret, of course. Um, I actually want to make a movie out of this. So that's my next dream, make a movie out of this and show it to millions and, and activate millions of Lyran star seeds and millions of cat lovers out there to the spiritual aspect of their cats and how they're connected and how the cats have a purpose and, and a mission. So that is my my big vision, really um, activate millions of cat lovers and millions of Lyran star seeds to their star seedness and have a movie. So there you go. Meow. Well, I see that for you as well, folks. If you're interested, uh, there's two books out there. This one is The Cat Secret out soon. And like she said, you can pre-order this on Amazon. Or of course, you can go into any bookstore. You just give her name as the author, Sylvie Sterling, and you could get both books. Um, so beautiful. Thank you for coming on the show today. Really grateful to you and to this information and the work you do. Thank you for having me and for giving the cats a voice. Mm -hmm. And folks, if you'd like to learn more about her, go to sylviesterling.com. And I end today's show with this quote, I love cats because I enjoy my home and little by little, they become its visible soul. If you enjoyed this episode, if you learned something today, consider following the show. Please subscribe to it on your favorite podcast platform, or most important, leave Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger a five-star review, a good review on Apple. It would mean the world to me because reviews, ratings, followers, subscriptions actually are super important metrics. These platforms use your likes, reviews, and subscribes because that moves my content in front of people who are interested to hear and learn this material. Thank you in advance for that. Next week on the show, I am speaking with breathwork practitioner, bee keeper, as in bzz, bee keeper, and shamanic medicine man, Angel Deer. Folks, thank you so much for joining us today on the show. And remember, your animal, your friend's animal, your parent's animal is a starseed too. And they have a purpose and a message. Find out what it is. Thanks for joining us.